Hi, everybody. Um, so we're going to talk about designing Pythonic APIs. Um, let's start. So a little about me. Uh, like Doron said, I work as a consultant at uh, Bluevine and uh, RavTech. Uh, I'm also, I also teach Python courses, and there's a nice open source project you can look up, pycubeta.com, that I work on. And that's it. You can find me at noamelf.com. Um, okay, so to, to our point. So why are good package interfaces important? So let, let's take a regular day in a programmer's life. We go to the office. Uh, we have our cup of coffee, right? Morning is not our best thing. Uh, we sit down, we see we got a sign with a new ticket. Uh, we need to implement this feature called cat counter. You need to grab a picture and count all the cats inside. Uh, we don't know if it's a good feature for our product, but okay, that's our job. We just go on and implement it. Uh, so we sit down at the computer, rub our hands, and like any good programmer will do, open up Google and search Python count cats. Um, of course, we we're very hopeful someone already did it before us and we won't have to implement it ourselves. Um, there, there, there are very kind people in this world who share their work as open source. And so we, we open up uh, the first result, hoping to get something nice, and then we see uh, a bunch of mumbo jumbo about how the package works and stuff. We don't really care to read it because, like, it doesn't, I don't know, we think most of us can't really relate to it. And then we go to the quick start, right? That's the, that's the most interesting part. And then we see the API. So the API the package provides us. So the first point is that the interface is the gateway for understanding what a package does. Um, it's really important, like when you see the interface, it gives you a notion of how to use it. Will it fit, it fit your needs? And a good interface is intuitive and easy to learn. Um, if, if the interface will be um, clear, it make your life a lot, lot easier. Our next point is that once we decide we'll use this package, we really hope that the creator of it won't change its API too often because it's a mess if you want to get a new feature and you need to start refactoring it. You need to start, like when you upgrade the version, you need to start refactoring your API and such, and nobody wants to do that. And most importantly, uh, great interfaces make programming fun, and I think that's, that's maybe the reason that uh, you chose to work with Python, or maybe you didn't choose to work with Python, or you got assigned to work with Python and you really like it because it has a great interface, right? All of the, like the code looks nice. It's fun to use it. Okay, so what we'll do in this talk, we'll review some key differences between uh, Kenneth Rich a, um, requested um, package. Anyone here uses it? Show of hands. And so it's like one of the most used package uh, in the Python ecosystem, right? And we'll compare it to the standard library URL leap in some typical scenarios that both can be used. Um, we'll see what makes requests so popular, and we'll try and learn lessons that, like, we'll try to learn from Kenneth Rage how can we create great APIs the next time we write a package or even just a model. Now, a disclaimer, a very important one, is that I also published this talk at a blog post a while ago, and uh, I got a comment from uh, Nick Collin, who the, I know David might be familiar with him, he's like a very uh, serious guy in the Python community, he's a core developer, uh, and he was a bit mad at, at, this, uh, at this comparison. And, and, and at the beginning I was uh, just thrilled that someone like, as important as he wrote my, uh, read my uh, blog post, I was really happy, and then I looked into his points, and, and he had some very solid ones. So the chief ones are that, this is a disclaimer, okay? So the chief ones are that uh, URL was written like 10 years earlier in Python 2.0, I think it was added, and it has less of the language tool that requests had when it was written, and that it served for other purposes besides just HTTP 
uh, calls, which has a uh, different format that it serves, so it's not as optimized for it as uh, requests. Now, with that said, this talk will be interactive. We'll give, um, we'll use five different use cases. I'll, for each one of them, we'll see how the two packages handle them. And uh, we'll see what lessons we can learn from the different APIs. I'll ask you guys to, to find them. Um, there, be, there might be one or more uh, lessons we can learn. And then we'll review the code, we'll review some of the implementation of requests in your relief. And that's it. So let us start. So what happens when we're sending a GET request? More accurately, how does the different packages send GET requests? Um, this is the code. Um, review it for a sec and raise your hand if you have uh, an idea what we can learn here. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, so Yotam, I know you asked me. Uh, so Yotam said the request method is implicit. Okay, that's cool. That, that, that's one of the points. Uh, and, and we'll get to there. Any other points? Yeah. Okay, cool. So the response, the, the request uh, libraries provide a better representation of the object, right? And there's a final one, there are three points. Yes. Oh, great. Okay, so you, you hit it on the, you hit the nail on the head like they say. Uh, so you got the three points. That, what he said is that the request has, um, has all its import in the top level of the package. Uh, you can see that, okay, we'll just review the points together. So, so that's the, the last one that you said. Um, that's the first point that I brought up. So top level imports are nice. Okay, it's nicer visually, right? When you look at it, it's shorter. And another advantage of it is that um, it kind of separates your implementation from the, from the interface you give to your uh, user. Let's look at it here. What request does is it, in its init py file, in its top level init py file, it imports all the relevant um, objects from the package that the user should or probably will use. It doesn't, it doesn't mean you, you shouldn't use other things from the package, but it like, exposes them very nicely. And it's also very nice for the ID when you just press request and you see what you can get, what you can use. I think there's, there's one of the delightful things about good API is that you don't need to go to the documentation and with the auto-completion, right, and the prototype of the function, you can understand what you want to do. Okay, so that's one point. The other one that you also brought up is that uh, explicit API endpoints is better than implicit, right? So like in the then of Python, we always want to be as explicit as we can, and the request uses an explicit get method to do HTTP get, while urllib uses url open, and only if you bring it, if you don't bring it a data argument, it's a get. If you bring it, if you add a data argument, it's a post request. And this, is, this makes the interface uh, clearer to first time users and just to anyone who reads the code. Um, so, if we review it, it's a nice implementation. So the implementation is really nice. What, because all HTTP requests has a similar flow, right? When you, when you want to send a request, you need to encode it, you need to parse the argument, you need to send it, you need to decode it, you need to parse the argument again. So request has a, in its API module, it has a main request uh, function that gets called from the different HTTP verbs that we want to use. This also allows us to be more explicit about the parameters we are sending to the, get requ to the request we're going to use. If you look at po get, for example, you know that get can only send params. It can send data like the post request. 
and when you but when you move it when you send it to uh, the request function to the main flow function it, they just receive as keyword arguments and and the request function handles them so and the, and the last one we talked about is helpful object representation so when we're creating an object this is a pretty like basic uh, lesson when we're creating an object uh, we want to give it a good representation because th this, these are the differences between the two. The, the response, the, re the, the request representation is also so the status code of the request, which is very helpful when you're working with it interactively or just debugging it. While, uh, while your relib is showing the basic, like the default object representation, so when you're using when you when you're building your own object, use the representation method. It's very very helpful. You can see it here. And think what what the user will will benefit from seeing when he when he looks at it. Okay, cool. So we're done with our first use case. Second use case: getting a request status code. I'm, st I'm starting to warm up. I hope. Um, Okay, so so just we're talking about getting a request status code. This is kind of this might be a bit easy for seasoned developers. What what do we see here? The raise of hands. What is the key difference? Um, can you speak a bit louder? Okay, cool. So exactly. So. Uh, your relib uh, uses a method to, to fetch the, the code, the status code, while request just get, fetch the attribute or has attribute uh, notation. Um, this is, this is a, a kind of a basic uh, idea in Python that there's no need for getters and setters. Right, you can, if, if we look here at the your relib implementation, we'll see that we have a get code function that just returns an attribute. Now, when, when, we, when we access an attribute, it, it's clear that when, when you just access it, that it's not a function, it's clear just to access it as, as an attribute. But some seasoned developers from other languages will say, um, what about encapsulation, right? Um, when you're writing object, objects, you want to encapsulate it. You don't want other, like users of this object access its data members because uh, you might want to change it in the future and then you get, you have to break the API and people will be mad at you and we said we don't want to change APIs too often. So in Python you have the property decorator uh, that helps you in that case. Now another uh, disclaimer at this point that it didn't exist when your relief was written. <laughs> I'm always like uh, protecting it now. Uh, so let's see, let's see the property decorator. You just add it on top of a property, uh, on top of a function, and then you can change, for example, if okay was the property of our object and we want to change it into a, into a function, we want to do some stuff with it, uh, we can add the property decorator, and then we can call it as, an, as a property, but it's actually a function. So we keep our encapsulation uh, safe. Next one. Okay, so handling error. This is a very opinionated uh, idea that I have, um, and, and, and let's go over it. Uh, I, I'll review it because uh, it's because. <laughs> so uh, we, we, you really, when you when you send a request, and for example, here we get a 400 uh, status back. By the way, this is HTTP bin. It's a nice service that you can just call and get the status code you're calling to or whatever whatever you want to, it's like a mocking service. Um, so when you, when you call for, for, when you get a 400 um, status code, it will raise an exception. Now, uh, that's, that's fine and well, but when request does it, it doesn't uh, return an exception, I guess those of you who use it know, it will just returns the object, but it allows you to later uh, raise, raise an exception for a status, for bad status. And this can be very helpful if you want to write code like this, like not like exceptions, I don't know how you feel about it, but I feel they're like the accept try accept block is a bit ugly, right? So you don't 
you can use it, but if, if I see I can avoid using it, I prefer not just because it looks bad, but sometimes it's more correct to use it. Um, in this case, it's a very nice feature of request API that you can ch use the um, use the OK property that we saw earlier. And if we go back to its implementation, right, it just raises an exception for bad status. And if it's if uh, there is an exception, it will return it will return the result. And so this is a very elegant solution for this for this thing. Um, now it, it one it, it's not suit for all cases because Python is an exception based language. If some if some exception happens, you need to throw an exception. That's how uh, people are used to using the language. But uh, sometimes it's a good idea not to do that and um, and let the user choose if he wants to raise an exception or or check for the for the status code or the result of the function and. If you provide a handler for raising an exception, it's something that, um, like, okay, it, it works like this. So if, if you're raising an exception, you can't also do checks. But if you uh, do check, but if you enable, if you don't raise an exception and you enable a method to raise an exception if the user wants to, then uh, you can do checks. So this is how request uh, went about it. Okay, the first use case. Fourth use case, uh, encoding and se sending and decoding post request. So, now it's your turn again. Uh, we can see th there's a bunch of code here, take a, take a few seconds, and uh, let's talk about the difference here. And, and try to think, like it's pretty clear there's a lot of code in your relief and less code in request, but try to think about what, what less and what idea we can learn from it. Okay, so so the point is, uh, request is using the bare necessity, necessity, for, yeah, for, for for the user, right? It it sounds okay, but can someone phrase it a bit differently? Yeah, right, great. So 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 your point your points are correlated. So when request was written, ten years later, the web was already very much uh, JSON based. So so it. it so the developers knew that uh, the, the main flow would be using JSON, so they provided a plugin method for, for using JSON, right? So if we look at, um, at URL, what it does, it encoded, encodes the argument, and you can see the, right, the URL uh, type, like how it shows when it sends in the, in the request. Then it sends the request, then it needs to decode it, and then it needs to load it as JSON for it to be a Python dictionary. And request just enables uh, a nice plugin uh, data argument that will encode. That it does the exact same thing just inside the package. So it will encode the, the data and then it will uh, parse it back as a Python uh, dictionary. So, so the lesson like that I formulated here is uh, easy access to common functionality. You need to try to predict you should know because you're probably writing the package because you're using it, right? You need to try to predict what, how will your user use the package, use your package, and think how you can make pluggable methods that will ease the usage and make it more beautiful and fun to use. Um, okay, so on the same note, requests also provide a method for sending JSON data, right? So it's, it's pretty simple, right? It just doing a JSON load inside the request uh, library. Okay, cool. We reach our, our final use case, uh, sending authenticated requests. So let's, uh, let's have a look. This, is all, this one also is a bit long, so you can uh, read it, go about it, and uh, tell me what you think. I see your Tom is raising his hand, but he spoke already. So somebody else want to, wants to grab this uh, opportunity to this six seconds of fame in PyCon? Yes. Okay. Okay. So you're saying it's more intuitive, and what 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 makes it like we're trying to find out. Uh, Specific. What makes it more intuitive? Uh, 
Okay, so it's, it's more, it uses more familiar concepts. And what are more familiar concepts for a Python developer who doesn't know the package? What, what data structure does he know? Almost, it's, it's not the point yet, uh, over there, yeah? Just a sec, just a sec, with, with a show of hands. Um, so, so I didn't, it, it makes sense, but that's not the point I wanna, I want to, to bring up. Yes. Oh, yes. So, uh, so what, uh, what he said here is that uh, request is using a native Python object for its authentication. Um, it's using a tuple here, right? So this is pretty neat, I think. And 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 we'll go and we'll go and we'll speak about it in a sec. But there's another tip uh, here, hiding here somewhere. Somewhere, yes. Okay, so, so you're saying it's the most concise interface, but if you, if you dig in a bit further to this notion, there, there's a more complex, like we, we see it in the example, there's a more complex scenario when you want uh, the session to, um, you want to have the, authent the authentication on the session, right? And there's the most basic use case when you just want to make a single request and give it an authentication to that single request. So, so let's, let's go over this point. So the first one I just mentioned is provide possibility for simple and advanced usage. So when you're using a package, sometimes you need to, to dig in deep into the package and do some complex scenario. And not that having a session with credential is so complex, but <laughs> for, the, for the point. Um, and sometimes you just wanna use something simple, right? You just wanna you, you, it's, it's, you need some uh, something a bit more um, than, than a regular request, but not as, as further down as creating a lot of objects and stuff. So if you can provide a, uh, a plug for, for using it inside and, and, and not ruining your API too much, uh, that's a really nice thing, like request did here. Um, you can just, when you make a single request, you can just pass it an auth uh, tuple like we did with the session, and it will work just as well. It won't persist in the session, but it will work well. But sometimes you just wanna make a single request, right? Um, and so, so, this is a, so this is the first tip. And the second one is when, when possible, prefer Python data types over self-made ones. So it's pretty frustrating when you want to use a package and then you start to, to import objects from the package, initiate them, and send them to function of the package, to function of the package. And it's pretty nicer just to, to, to pass it a Python object, right? The regular Python object. Um, and what request does inside is that it checks if this object, this auth object, right? We're using a duck typing here. By the way, it won't work with uh, types, David. <laughs> or maybe if you can bring it different types. But you can pass it a tuple or you can pass it an auth object. If it's a tuple uh, and its length is uh, two, you convert it into a, to a basic auth uh, object. If, if it's a basic auth object, you don't need to do that, right? So this is uh, the implementation. And th th that's also a reason against uh, typing your, like limit, it brings some limitation if you wanna put types on all of the functions and objects you're creating. It can be a bit uh, unpythonic. I think that's the reason, like, people who object it, that's their uh, idea. Um, and that's it, so we're done. I hope uh, you learned some new stuff. Any, any questions? Okay, so, so uh, 
the question or the note is that the, it's not sure that the Python stand library has to have a nice API as such as like a request and it's enough for it to bring like to, to put in the functionality and then other open source packages can create these uh, beautiful APIs. It's a valid point. Makes sense. And my time is up. So uh, thank you very much.